mill buildings hold countless stories. For the family of Dorothy Cox, getting fired from a mill in New Bedford during the Great Depression resulted in nearly a hundred years of sweet success. They let her go to give her job to a male that had a family. So she had to survive, so she started making chocolates at home. That was in 1928, the beginning of Dorothy Cox's chocolates. When I get a cut, I bleed chocolate. Francis Cox, the current president, runs the business with his wife Shirley and their sons. He is Dorothy's grand nephew. Her brother was his grandfather. My grandfather taught me how to make chocolates and my dad. I've only worked one other place for one week in my lifetime. Cash one other paycheck. Initially founded in New Bedford with a retail location in Fairhaven since the 1930s, Francis says the family's recent decision to move manufacturing to Fall River just made sense. The original Dorothy was born here in Fall River with my grandfather was also born here. So the Cox family is actually back home. Here, the Cox family and their employees make over 250 different kinds of candy. About 80% is sold wholesale to other companies who put their names on it. I get a lesson in making bark, which to do right means getting your hands in it. Oh, we still do a lot of things by hand. That has its benefits. Take them home and lick them. Lick them. Sure. The Cox family says in Fall River, the welcome has been great. We've had a lot of politicians that Having checking on the us check and, and, you know, is there anything we could do to help you? The ultimate plan is to not just make the goodies here, but to have a cafe and scoop shop too. The Coxes also happen to be famous for their ice cream. It does not get more fresh than this. Seconds out of the machine. They say their new space in their family city of origin is packed with potential. And after nearly a century, they are, in a way, just getting started. It has room to grow. We went from 11,000 square feet to 27,000 square feet. And uh, it's going to be cool. Thumbs up. Mm. <laughs> From 27,000 square feet to 1.4 million. You could call this enormous Amazon Fulfillment Center a town within the city of Fall River. Traffic and all. The beeping is all about safety, right? Just like the rules of the road outside in the parking lot, we enforce them here. Kate Miller is the general manager of Boss 7, this vast, in constant motion operation. We're always open. We close two days a year. We lock the door on Thanksgiving. We lock the door on Christmas. Besides that, we're up and running. Sprinting is more like it. Boss 7, just like Boston, is a title town. Out of 76 sites in North America that ship this type of product, we are the number one shipper. So when you do Prime Week, right, all those great sales for our customers, this site ships the most volume every single day and for the whole week. Miller explains the Fall River Center only processes certain size packages. Each of these carts has packages that are sorted for a specific neighborhood. It has to do with the equipment needed to move it all. It's hard to kind of get your arms around. It's a little bit heavy. Almost everything we ship is under 50 pounds. But when you buy a box of diapers, or a big bag of dog food, or a microwave, it's coming out of a facility like this. So why Fall River? We look for getting close to highways to where our customers live, and also having really great populations of folks who will want to work in these buildings. So the history of the Fall River community and this area and the textile industry really brings in a really amazing workforce. So if you live in Fall River, do your deliveries come even faster? They don't, <laughs> right? Nothing goes straight from our building to your house. Darn it. Yeah, it has to go <laughs> from our building to another building, then to your house. Despite that, Miller says the benefits to the city are significant. More than 1,200 full-time workers are employed here. Then there are the outside folks coming in. We have plumbers and electricians and contractors and cleaning crews coming and going all day long. The shipping giant says they also look out for the little guy, seeking out local organizations to benefit from donations and outreach. We give them pallets, we fill up truckloads of diapers or, you know, maybe a, a case of juice where one can was damaged, but the rest can be donated. So not only do we go out into the community and get involved and volunteer and make contributions, but just being able to contribute products to these local organizations has, has made a difference.